Today on City Line, Boston's transgender community, voices of change, and the challenges they face. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. We're exploring issues facing the LGBTQ community, specifically one of its most marginalized groups, the transgender or gender non-conforming community. We profiled a local transgender rights advocate who has single-handedly changed the landscape of transgender rights and resources here in the Commonwealth. We advise you that some of the content and subject matter in this piece may be sensitive. Meet Chastity Bowick, Executive Director for Boston's Transgender Emergency Fund, an organization offering crucial resources to trans people across the Commonwealth. But Chastity was not always the confident leader you see before you. Her journey is quite remarkable, and like so many stories of triumph, it starts in a rural town too small to contain such a determined individual. I was 14, and my friend had this magazine at school, and they said, um, they said they was calling a, a, a he, she at the time in the magazine, actually. Um, but then they was like, wanted to be referred to as a trans woman, and that was my first time, like, hearing, like, transsexual or transgender or anything of that nature. And I'm like, well, what is this? And that piqued my interest. And then having a family member who identified as lesbian or bisexual at the time, the way the family talked about her, and I'm like, okay, well, I'm different in a different sort of way as well. Is that how I'm going to be treated? We had a chance to speak with Chastity's cousin, Norvella, about who Chastity was as a child. Chastity has also been, um, was kind of different. A feminine, more feminine child, not a masculine boy. You moved from Rochester to Boston with Chastity when she was 17, is that right? I did. Why do you think Chastity was ready to leave her hometown at such an early age. Chastity was always comfortable with me and knew that I would be very accepting of Chastity. Chastity saw Boston as a place of safety with me and knew that Chastity could grow into who she was. But things didn't necessarily get any easier for Chastity after making the move to Boston. While finishing my senior year here in Boston at South Boston High, I was working full-time in Roxbury. People were uncomfortable with themselves to be around me. You know, you got employees rumbling, you got customers saying, oh, I don't want a he, she, taking my order. In order to sustain the income, I had to take uh, a lot of verbal abuse. As we got to know Chastity, it became more apparent that her inability to keep a job had nothing to do with her work ethic. How would you describe Chastity? Oh, ambitious. We also had a chance to speak with Chastity's sister, Renata um, Bowick. Very determined to get what she wants and a hard worker. Due to the constant harassment and discrimination that Chastity experienced, she found it difficult to sustain an income in this city and soon found herself in a desperate situation. I found myself homeless here in Boston and I started indulging in survival sex work. A friend told me about they didn't know the exact name. He's like, oh, it's this trans place at the in Worcester. My aunt works there, and you should give him a call. I was just talking to myself that night, and like, if I make it to the next day, I'm going to call this number. The guy who was running at the time, Jesse Peck, he told me to go to South Station and got me a, a ticket to Worcester. After that weekend, the Trans Emergency Fund had found me a room and paid the rent for three months, which allowed me to figure out, okay, what do I want out of this life that I was given? And the one thing I kept coming back was a resource for my community. Chastity had finally found a place where her tireless work ethic was both accepted and appreciated. In 2018, after the then executive director stepped down, Chastity took on the top job at the Transgender Emergency Fund. She speaks about some of her fondest memories of helping her community firsthand. A trans man who actually had two children and was about to be evicted with these two children. Um, and him not knowing where they were going to go, thinking the next spot is going to be a shelter and what does a shelter look like, 
a shelter family setting looked like with a trans man and two kids. We were able to come in and assist with that back rent so they were able to stay in place. Just the gratefulness, the gratitude um, that he had was overwhelming that I started crying. So now we were both crying over the phone together. Whether she knew it or not, Chastity was creating a community by becoming an invaluable resource to her people. It's a sentiment echoed by her peers. We're fighting for survival. We're fighting for our lives and we're fighting for our rights to keep housing, to keep ourselves safe. And it's just the most beautiful full circle moment to come into this community, to come into this place of needing help and needing support, but then being able to turn that around and then give and help and continue that for other people has just been life-changing. Meet Jane, a one-time beneficiary of the TEF and now its manager of member services. With Jane's help, the TEF is proud to offer community support, drop-in meetings and organize retreats for its members. We had a chance to speak with TEF member Vela Riley, who describes one of these retreats and its importance to the trans community. I believe we were in Maine, um, and it was like a retreat to kind of bring together a community of trans women and um, kind of just get us out of the city and I think put us in a place where we can kind of build those relationships with each other. As well as being the director of the TEF, Chastity also takes part in several other trans rights events. Last June, she helped organize a trans rights march from Nubian Square to Franklin Park. We are more than just Pride Month. You know, we have a lot of organizations and politicians who, who stalk us down um, in May and June. Like, we need this and we need that. But where are you in December when it's cold and we have a high number of homeless trans folks? So we need people to be involved all year round. What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Now! We don't get it? Shut it down! What Chastity has achieved for this marginalized community is unprecedented, and the pride people take in being close to Chastity is undeniable. The work that Chastity is amazing. Listening to you, watching your face when you're talking about Chastity, you must be very proud of the work she's doing now. I'm the big sister. I'm proud of her. I will help her any way that I can. What you see is what you get. Chastity is no pretender. Chastity is a motivator and a hard worker, and she would do anything to get her word across. Chastity Bowick is a person who has managed to transform her traumatic experiences into an arsenal of resources for her community, and her mission is never quite finished. I am happy to say that we will have a house coming soon in May of 2022, where we will be able to house at least six to seven, six to eight homeless, transgender, or gender not conforming folks while they are given the tools and resources needed to be sustainable. To put it simply, Boston's transgender world is a safer and more hopeful place thanks to Chastity, and she'll tell you there's no secret to success, just people who are willing to put the work in. As trans folks, we grew up thinking all we were be able to do is sex work or a pizza shop, but that is the complete opposite. We can be lawyers, doctors, teachers, judges, police officers, and all we have to do is put in the hard work. Anybody can do this work as long as you have the dedication to it to do it. And I want to, you know, mentor and guide anybody who wants to do this work because it's needed. We are needed. Up next, the legal and political discourse surrounding transgender rights has reached a fever pitch. Both sides galvanized around opposing oppositions. We speak with two representatives of trans advocacy organizations to better understand what's behind these political debates.